Rock stars, songwriters, the sidemen and women, music producers, and more. Join Dana Steele each week to talk about the rock business. Slide into the booth and join the conversation. This is Dana's Diner on Houston Radio Platinum. One of my favorite stories going, you know, back in the day was when we would hang out at Cardi's. Cardi's was just this incredible club that, ooh, sticky floors and everything. But, you know, just the best music. You two came there at the beginning. Uh, the police, I remember, were traveling together in one station wagon. It was at the corner of Westheimer and Fountain View. And it was just the place to see everybody uh, in the in the 80s and this incredible band one of my favorite bands still to this day zebra played new year's eve and i will never forget that at midnight i took <laughs> off my shoes and the band drank champagne out of my high heels ew that is nasty felix hanneman of zebra not when you're like 30 years old and you don't care <laughs> <laughs> i will always remember that we had so much fun that evening. And then, you know, fast forward, gosh, 25, probably almost 30 years later, I'm getting ready to go on stage to give a speech. And I think Orlando, it's one of those, you know, 10,000 people in the audience things. And uh, the guy that's getting ready to introduce me, it's a big business speech and it's a, a big customer service um, conference, people all over the world. And the guy that's introducing me with the company leans over and goes, I think you know my dad. And I was like, wow. What? And he goes, yeah, something about he drank champagne out of your shoes. I'm like, oh, my God, your dad is in Zebra? <laughs> and I can't remember. I think it was the drummer's son. Jeremy, yes. Maybe, Jeremy. maybe, maybe. I don't remember, but he was like, yeah, my dad said he drank. I mean, this is a grown businessman standing there with me, and I'm getting ready to go on stage and tell people how to be successful. And I, I must That's have looked hilarious. like a, a deer caught in headlights. My dad says he drank champagne out of your shoe, and there's only one band that ever <laughs> drank champagne out of my shoes. <laughs> hey, That's Felix, crazy. how are you? I'm good. I'm fantastic, baby. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Felix and I actually reconnected on um, Twitter, now known as X. So we kind of keep in touch over there. And Felix helps me swat down the trolls every once in a while over there. Um, but I just, you know, I love following you. I'm still trying to figure out how to get you. You know, I need I need more performances when I'm in Houston from you. I need more performances in Palm Springs when I'm in residence here. Where are you and where are you going and what are you doing? I think you're do even doing a, a, a Mardi Gras kind of thing that's going to be, um, I think it's tomorrow. So tell me about that. Well, th that's actually our first outdoor show in Metairie uh, for a live free concert. It's pretty wild. Uh, we were invited for this year. It's uh, tomorrow. It's Friday. And uh, we're doing Family Gras, which is in Metairie. It's not in downtown New Orleans. Metairie is like a suburb of uh, New Orleans. So, and uh, I'm, I'm ex excited about it because, I mean, they've had a, a number of major artists. I mean, Taylor Swift's been there, Cheap Trick. I mean, you name it, a lot of people have been there and played that. And funny enough, being from there, we have never played it before, which is really wild. Really? Took 49, 49 years to get there. That is great. So what have you been doing the last 30 years? I mean, you guys are still touring. You're still making music. Tell me what's going on. Well, well, because this is our 49th year, last year, 2023, was the 40th anniversary of the first record, as you know, because you helped. Make no, it was not that long ago. It was not. <laughs> Shut up. 40 years ago. <laughs> and I'm years still ago. 32. It's amazing how that works. <laughs> <laughs> and you broke us at KLOL in Houston and put us in heavy rotation and slayed it for us. But that was great. We toured with uh, Loverboy. We toured with Cheap Trick. We toured with ZZ Top, Oreo Speedwagon, uh, Sammy Hagar. And we did some stuff with Journey and stuff like that. And and since then, after that, we came out with the second record. We toured that for a while, did the third record, toured that for a while. And then we all kind of laid low for a while. It was a long time. We, we put out a, a live record in 1990. 
And that was okay. That was pretty cool. And then we did a, a, a fourth record in 20, 2003, I think it was. And uh, now we are celebrating last, like I said, last year, we're celebrating the 40th anniversary of the record. We've been out all over the country. We were even in your neighborhood, but you were in Europe, I think, at the time. Right. Doing that one year, you know, lost right, weekend doing your, around the yeah, world. Doing your around the world trip, which we stayed in touch with. For, that was fun because I was always, where's Waldo with Dana? <laughs> And uh, so, and I'm coming back your way. I'm going to be doing the ranch uh, house, which is in uh, San Luis Obispo, I think it is. And that's not too far from Palm Springs, if I understand. I think you guys are south of uh, San Diego. Um, we are. If, it's like a triangle. If you did L.A., you know, if everybody goes, well, I'm going to go to Palm Springs, but nobody knows where it is. It's it's yeah, like I don't L.A., if you do L.A. And, and San Diego and then you drew a triangle, we're kind of at the tip of the triangle out in the desert. I got gotcha. you. So we'll, we'll be uh, there. Uh, I think on that schedule I sent you, I, can't, I don't think. I don't yeah, I'm the, looking at it right now. Sam, I got to find it there. There it is on Oct oh, October the 3rd. Yes. You're going to have to remind me about that one. but <laughs> Of course I will. <laughs> That is so far away. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you got to book in advance, right? You know. Oh, uh, yeah, with me, I guess. You know, you got to, you know, you got to get on the schedule so well, I can you, get you down could there be and anywhere. see you. you. You could be in Greece by that time. <laughs> Who are some of your favorite bands when you look back um, that maybe you hear a song come on the radio and you think, oh, that band was fun to tour with? Well, it was really all of those bands pretty much that I just mentioned because they were all over the radio. Journey, Cheap Trick, REO Speedwagon. And we toured with REO for a while with Survivor. And uh, so all of those songs were so in heavy rotation at the time. All of that stuff reminds me of when, when the record first came out, you know. And that was very exciting. In fact, I was on a vacation with my agent. And we were up in the Smoky Mountains and, you know, we really didn't have much because back then there was no Internet radio or anything, no cell phones. So we were up in the mountains in Smoky Mountains, probably up in Gatlinburg somewhere. And uh, so, you know, you, we you know, made phone calls to friends and stuff, tell them where we were. And they go, well, do you know what's happening? I said, what do you mean? What's happening? He goes, well, you know, the record's out and it's like killing it. And, you know, everybody's heavy rotation this heavy rotation that and we I, i'm you know i'm up in the mountains with no uh internet because there's no such thing and uh <laughs> you know and i'm finding out that the record is all over the place by that time you know so that was pretty fun aren't we happy there were no cell phones back then yeah i mean the funny thing <laughs> about it was that i don't even know how everybody stayed in touch with you had to find a pay phone if you weren't old. <laughs> If you wanted to, I've been begging recently for old pictures. And one of the things I asked for is, come on, somebody has to have had a camera, an Instamatic, something that night on, on New Year's Eve when you were drinking the champagne out of my shoes. One of these days, that picture, it's somebody, somebody had to be taking pictures. I've been begging recently for, you know, if you've got pictures, please send them. There's a lot I want to see. There's probably a lot I don't want to see. Um, well, I think that audience was wasted by the time that clock ticked up to New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> what do you attribute your longevity to? I mean, you know, you and I have friends that have just, you know, they're selling real estate now. They stop playing, you know, music. They're IT guys. They're whatever. They're not playing music. They're not touring anymore. They're not doing what it is they love. And you seem to still love it and you're still doing it. What do you attribute that to? I, I only attribute it to a few things, and I attribute it seriously to our following. I think we were blessed with the fact that, you know, we started out in New Orleans. We played all out the whole Gulf Coast. You know, we played Texas. We played New Orleans. and We played Louisiana, all up and down Louisiana. We played Mississippi. We played Mobile, Alabama. We played in Tallahassee, Florida. And then we moved up to New York. And then, you know, the whole tri-state area became a home for us. And so before we were ever signed, we were together for eight years. So we had a whole following that, you know, that had nothing to do with the record. And, you know, so once the record came out, that's really what helped make it the fastest debut record in, in the history of Atlantic Records, which is crazy. And uh, so, you know, 
once you know some of that stuff where the you know the the record and the radio stops playing you and stuff like that. It, it didn't really do that for us because, you know, we still had a following. We could still go down to those places or still play in New York and we could still draw people, which, you know, still kept money in our pockets and, you know, still kept us viable. It's one of the things I love about social media is reconnecting with you, reconnecting with people like you, yeah. uh, watching the fan base grow, watching new fans discover you know tell me what you want who's behind the door what is that song i i played um tell me what you want the other day on houston radio platinum and where i'm back on the air which is so much fun and and people were like you know posting who is that so i know they're younger they're younger you know listeners who are are, are now discovering zebra it's just timeless music it still Thank sounds you. so good who's behind the Thank door you. also yeah well, I mean, and I think that's a, another thing, you know, when we were playing before the record came out, we were playing all that music, you know, we were sneaking them in because, you know, we we're doing a lot of covers. We were doing ZZ Top. We were doing Led Zeppelin, Moody Blues, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we would sneak in our, our, uh, our, all of our original stuff. And so we were playing a lot of uh, things called CYOs down South, Catholic youth organizations. And we would play all of these gyms. And all of these kids were under 18. It was the only place that they could go and see the band. And by the time they grew up to be 21 and the record came out, well, they were all coming either to the clubs or to the venues to see the band. So it was like, uh, you know, it was like seeding a market that, you know, it was, you know, obviously wasn't intentional, but, you know, it was really something that 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 grew up. These, I, I still know a young lady that was coming to see us at CYO, St. Christopher CYO, who was 14 at the time, who still comes and sees the band to this day. That's fantastic. And, and I bet you no one was drinking champagne out of anyone's shoes, though. <laughs> not at <laughs> <in> a CYO. <laughs> not at a CYO. Well, our time is up. What? What is? How can people send you money? <laughs> Is there a new album? What? What? Yes. Tell people well, how can people find you and how can people buy your music? Okay. Well, they can find us at thedoor.com. That's our website. T H E D O O R S. Who's behind the door.com. And we are working on a reissue of the first record and we're working on new music. And we're also been filming uh, this past year and we'll be filming this year to put a new documentary. We would put it out a documentary out around the same time that we had done the fourth record. And that went, that's over obviously 20 years ago. So we're putting out a whole new documentary together, you know, because uh, obviously next year will be 50 years. So we're hoping to have all of that stuff tied up, you know, the new release and the new record and uh, maybe even some live stuff. We used to do, you know, we've done the orchestra stuff. We've done Zebra with the orchestras in, in Louisiana. Ooh, and, that would be very cool to see you with yeah. an orchestra doing that. Yeah. And we're, we're doing that would another be great. one in Lafayette. And we also did another one that we did in Louisiana with a bunch of horn guys. They call themselves the Lip Busters, which is kind of funny, you know, because they, on your horns, you know, your, your lip yeah. gets all beat up. <laughs> But so they so that we what we did is they wrote charts for some of the songs that would uh, go well with horns and stuff like that. So we have a lot of re recorded stuff live and uh, we have some new music and old music and music that's never seen the light of day on some of the recordings that we had done over the years. And we're going to try to compile all of that stuff and hopefully we can put it together faster than we can make this Zoom meeting work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wish i had saved it took us a while to get uh you know, <laughs> felix is a hell of a musician but don't ever hire him to do your it oh <laughs> my god trying to explain to him how to turn his zoom on <laughs> but Horrible. we did it you actually your stage manager got on the other line and, yes, and got did. it done you know there's a great there there is really a market for these documentaries there's a documentary called runaway radio the rise and fall of klol that will start no streaming the end of february so you need to see that wow. um That's there's awesome. a great one i just watched called um it's a three-part series on uh paramount plus called i want to rock the 80s metal dream. You would love it. Um, there's a scene where Kip Winger walks into a radio station. And that's the only way I know about it. Because somebody took a screenshot and said, is that you? <laughs> and it was. It was me when Kip was coming in to do an interview. So I think people would love to see your story because it is just a fantastic story. I will put uh, 
um, some links to your social media and the door.com where people can find you. And uh, you look great. You still rock, Thank Felix Hanneman. So do you. So do you. You've been listening to Dana's Diner, a weekly conversation with the men and women who created your favorite classic hits. Dana's Diner is produced by Dana Steele and Houston Radio Platinum.